Welcome to the Dry Bar Comedy Podcast. As usual, it's Taylor Nielsen. Hey, it's me, Jordan Macon. Hey, Co-hosts. Jordan. Co-hosts. Co-hosts together. with the most hosts. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's what they've been saying in the comments, at least. Yeah, that's... that. <laughs> We the podcast with the most co-hosts. That's <laughs> what we brag about. Um, well, how are you doing today? I'm great. I'm great. I'm feeling like I. I'm usually I'm the whitest person in the room, but you're looking extra white today. <laughs> I, don't know how. I'm feeling, I'm I feeling swear healthy. I look healthier than you in real life. I feel like but I have on color these in my things, face. I don't. I'm feeling great on that regard. <laughs> well, you know, this is the Drybar Comedy Podcast, which means we sit down with your favorite dry bar comedians. And we talk to them about their favorite bit, you know, learn a little bit about them. So, I mean, we got a great comedian here today. Should we just jump to the clip and well, dive should into jump it? to the clip. Uh, so I go, I go to see this weight loss doctor. He's very fancy. I found him on Groupon. And, um, <laughs> yes, he's very fancy. And he treated Angelina Jolie. And so I get in his office and there's all these pictures. So I'm thinking, that's a good guy to go to. Except I want to look like Angelina Jolie. Because the more I looked at the pictures, I realized Angelina Jolie, she looks angry. Okay? She looks angry. You know, she's always like this. You know why? Because she's starving, you guys. She's starving. And she's doing this because she's looking for food. You know what I'm saying? She's looking for Skittles. I'm telling you. All right. Well, you guessed it. Our guest, you know her from her Dry Bar special, Voices in My Head. Welcome to the podcast, Carrie Pomeroli. Thanks for being here. I'm going to go like this because that's what you guys did when you intro yourself. <laughs> Did we give each other a thumbs down? <laughs> you gave each other like you're like ah hello, and then you pointed at yourself. So I'll be like, oh, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. I thought that was a two thumbs down. Yeah, I thought review. it was two thumbs down. No, you thumb. just like it's me. Like <laughs> <laughs> that is very close between. Yeah, <laughs> this yeah, is a dangerous we close. Now we know I'm Carrie. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Our viewers get very confused if we're not pointing to who. Well, by the way, I right. think I am the whitest person on this podcast today. I'm just saying, like between the three of us, I'm. Like, <laughs> it's a tough competition. Yeah. I have all that today. Irish blood just like seeping out of me. Today. <laughs> well, I have that. Yeah, I have that too. You've got that. Yeah, you're right. Well, I believe that. Actually, most people assume because I'm a redhead, and that, but I did my DNA thing, and I actually only. My parents have a little bit of Irish, but you get a weird combination when it comes to each child. So I don't actually have any. I have Scott. So um, my dad's name is Rocco Pomeroli. He's like super Italian. And we uh, got him Ancestry.com. And we couldn't give it to him because he was going to have a seizure if he found out we were really Norwegian. Because like on the results, <laughs> it was like, I was like, we're Vikings, dad. Like we're not gamblers. And <laughs> we're not mafia. And he's, he'd be sad. So I don't know. Yeah. If Give it to him. That's funny. That's, <laughs> yeah, I uh, I'm just a mix of the Scotland and all the other European countries. I've always really liked Italian culture because oh, I kind of wished that I had a little bit of that. We are we are very cool. Stuff. I mean, my last name is Pomeroli. I will like claim. I'll claim Italian heritage. Very Irish. Very Italian. But um. We will cut you if you cross us. So I'm just saying, like, you better hope this podcast goes well today. We're we are scared. <laughs> we're glad we're doing this remotely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Carrie, are you are you broadcasting live from Hollywood right now? I actually am in California, but today I'm in Northern California. I am not in Sodom and Gomorrah. Um, <laughs> I am on my way to Arkansas. No, I'm on my way to San Francisco today. And then Arkansas, and then Florida. So today wow. you're catching me in Northern Cal. Well, thanks okay, for cool. fitting us into your busy schedule. Oh yeah, okay. you guys, I showered for you. It's a big day. Like you don't need <laughs> to do a lot of yeah. effort. When they email me to do this podcast, they're like, "It's video." I was like, "Oh, freak." Okay, fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you found you found like some sort of. Uh, modern art exhibit yes yes to sit I'm in, in front of That's i'm in beautiful. the mat right now uh yeah so, <laughs> um yes so i'm in northern california today very cool well, well i love the clip it's very funny the act out of Angelina Jolie looking for Skittles, and that's why she's always leaning certain ways for some reason. I was just cracking up. So, uh, since this is a podcast of deep, dark confessions, do you want to know something deep and dark about that? joke oh of course i'm glad you know what our let's podcast get in, is all let's about. get into it well um you know because being divorced is so popular uh i'll just start with that and i married a comedian with no car and then um we got 
divorced and um, we're still really good friends. And he helped me write that joke. And we kind of have been divorced for 10 years, but we're really good friends. And so we're kind of like, whose joke is it? Do we need to get lawyers to figure out like, what <laughs> oh, no. so yeah, we, we, cause we performed together for so many years. Um, and we're, we're, you know, we're, I, I would perform with him. I haven't performed with him on stage, like as a duo act. Uh, but as a married couple, we performed for many years. So that particular joke is sort of a compilation of like some of his stuff and some of my stuff, but I'm going to claim it as all mine now because um, it's on dry bar. So I'm going to take all the rights. On the- <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be yeah, like, I, I own it. A dry bar has now published it. I tell the judge that that one's mine, but we used to joke <laughs> like we were going to fight over punchlines instead of the children in court because that was more important. <laughs> that would get custody. more heated and more toxic well, than he fighting over joke, children ever. Could. He had a joke about models. And so it's sort of like he used to joke about models and how um, they couldn't stand up when they would walk the runway and they would look a little crooked. You know what I mean? And then I was joking uh-huh. about celebrities looking angry on the red carpet, looking for Skittles. So we always would like a lot of our kitchen <laughs> talk would end up in our act because that's where comedy comes from. Right. Of just like you just people are like, what was it like in your house? I'm like, just record it and you'll have a comedy special and you'll have the cops showing up as well because we're really loud. Um so, <laughs> so yeah. did you tell him beforehand you were going to put this in your dry bar special? Well, he... no, I, it's my joke. It's just that he helped me come up with the, the ideas of it. And I feel like he's going to get, he needs to get like $5. Like I'm just saying. Like, out of, <laughs> <laughs> out yeah, of my residual. And then, you know, one of the most fun things we comedians, I'm going to give you guys a lot of the back, back stuff that you probably don't know. Uh, what we comedians love to do is go on our specials, like a driver special, and uh, look at all the comments and like the hater comments. And so if there's any hater comments, I'm just going to be like, Ron, that was because of you. That was because oh, of you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, no, like when I first do a special or something, you know, there's there could be a hundred thousand comments. She's the funniest thing or whatever. And then there's that one dude who's like, I hate her hair or whatever he just decides to say that day. And then I call my comedian friends who have also done, you know, dry bars. And they're like, would you want to hear my comments? My friend, Bob Smiley's like, they said, I look like howdy doody's love child. You know, like, all right. Okay. I'm <laughs> yeah. um, you got to love the internet. I mean, the internet is a, a, a loving and hateful place. <laughs> oh yeah, the full spectrum. It's where people can truly blossom into their best selves. <laughs> I mean, and I go, and, and then you look at their profile, and they're clearly living in a basement, like clearly <laughs> building a bomb somewhere. Like, yeah, they're forty five, and they've got a Star Wars t shirt, crop top going on, and they're a man, you know. And it's just, I always look at their t shirt, and I feel like always the guys that make anything negative on my. They're always some kind of Dungeons and Dragons warrior that are wounded from something that happened in junior <laughs> high. I don't know what it is about me that makes them angry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I believe we've been re- referred to in, in our comments as Tweedledee and Tweedledum. Oh, my gosh. So I, uh, maybe it's the I, same guy. <laughs> I did this podcast years ago for the Babylon Bee, and you guys don't know who that is? Yes. Uh, uh-huh. So they get a lot of comments, right, like you guys. And uh, they posted this picture of me and it was like a headshot. And I was kind of doing one of those Hollywood, like, mm, I don't know what I was. Doing. Well, some guy was like, she looks like she has crazy eyes. And it started off a 10,000 comment. She does have crazy eyes. Do you think she's a murderer? What? Like the whole thing was about my crazy eyes and how I was like a psycho. Nobody's listening to my comedy. It became, and then my people got in on it. So then I go on my social media and I was like, Hey, Babylon B haters are talking about my crazy eyes. You guys got to go defend me. So then it was like war in the comments. If I was crazy or if I was not, and my teenage daughter was <laughs> dying. Like, she was like, this is amazing, mom. You know, that's so, so funny. you're like commanding the troops. I was like, oh, I, to will. <laughs> I will. I have people that are ready to go at any moment when there's a, a, a comment. I've got them ready to go to defend my honor. That's funny. <laughs> That's crazy. And did uh, you, did the uh, eyes comment, did that kind of get under your skin? No. Or is that something you've heard before? No, or is that no. Just it was like a field? picture. It was a picture that they had turned into black and white and it made my eyes just like creepy. 
Um, <laughs> and, like, I'm gonna, like, they were shiny. They were like shiny, like they're going to kill you. And I was, I, I have had um, comments about my forehead, about how much Botox I may or may not have had. I mean, living in Hollywood, there's not a single body part that hasn't been skewered. Uh, for good or bad, as a woman, um, right, right. So it's always delightful. <laughs> and then I have <laughs> chocolate at all times, just ready to go. Just like I'm ready for my binge eating when I have to read the comments. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not yeah. about my comedy, or they'll be like, I mean, it is sometimes, but it's usually just like, oh my gosh, how much Botox has she had? Or like, I, I don't know. I mean, it's always. One time they called me fat, and I was pregnant. I was like six months <laughs> pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> man carrie i will tell you you don't have to read the comments not that i follow this uh, podcast either but yeah, it's, you, you don't have to write some nice comments on this podcast i really need uh comedians <laughs> yeah. need attention though comedians need true. affirmation yeah. we literally go to a group of strangers every night and ask them to like us so in <laughs> essence I do need to read the comments because I have no <laughs> hobbies. I don't know. We should, maybe we collectively should invest in some sort of click farm that just, their only job is putting a little bit of positivity in the comments. <laughs> well, you know, the joke is 99% are positive and we insecure people will focus on the one, <laughs> you know, the 1% of negative and can't even accept like yeah. all the nice comments and, Okay, I will tell you guys. You want more secrets? Okay, here's more secrets. Of there's course, secrets. that's what we're here for. There's this hot guy from my high school, and I don't even mind saying his name, Eric Faust. Okay, I hope he listens. <laughs> um, so hot. And he was like bad boy hot, right? Like kind of brooding, like he could build a bomb too, but you didn't know for sure. Like, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just Jordan remember wore, like, I don't yeah. even, in my head, in my head, he wore like, yeah, like you like dark colors. Uh, and we weren't friends. Okay. We weren't friends, but apparently now we're internet friends and he bought my books and he left me a good review of my women's Christian books. And he left me this glowing review of, and he's married and all that stuff. But I called my high school girlfriends and I was like, Eric Faust and I are best friends. You guys like Eric Faust loves me so much. We are best friends. And they're like, Carrie, you need to get a hobby. Like you really need to move. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're just, they're just mad that Eric Bass didn't even jealous. review of jealous. their book. Eric, we love you. But no, it is funny <laughs> being, do. it is funny being in our entertainment, right? Because you do connect with people on a worldwide level. And sometimes it is fun to connect with people from your past uh, that you did or didn't have a close friendship with, but maybe they like something that you do. Um, I can't tell you that I don't get giddy when some of the super popular girls in my high school, like send me a message on Facebook or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's interesting how those dynamics, you know, are sustained from high and school. I'm, and I'm old. I was in high school quite some time ago and I still like get, get excited that somebody likes I don't care if strangers like what I do. I mean, you guys, I care not because we're friends. Uh, but it's like <laughs> I want that girl from from like the late '90s to be like, you know what? I was watching you on Dry Bar, and I I really appreciate what you do. And sorry, I never talked to you in the lunchroom. That's what I'm looking for right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Carrie, do you find though? I find that there's like. The more popular you were in high school, the less cool stuff you're doing as an adult. <laughs> yeah, Not always true, I, but I kind um, of feel like that happens. I was popular by default. I hung out with the popular crowd, but I was struggling to serve. It was eat or be eaten in my high school. My high school was like definitely like um, Thunderdome, like for sure, every day. <laughs> so I I definitely was just sliding in that. I dated a, a football player that could bench press 320. And lift heavy oh, objects, which I felt was my key to success. And um, that, yeah, oh, Chad, I want to give a shout know. out to Chad. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> his name's Chad. Right. This is a high school reunion episode. Well, Eric, okay, Chad. So my comedy is a lot about nostalgia, and I wrote a book. My first book was about my dating life. So if you've ever dated me, there's a good chance that you're somewhere in a book or on YouTube or in a show or, um, you know, and I don't have to pay rights because they didn't sign anything. So, um, I think <laughs> right. but um, I'm doing this show right now in San Francisco. I'll tell you really quickly. 
it's really cool. It's called Mortified. And I'm reading it's and it's been around for a long time. And I was in the pilot. It actually went on Comedy Central. I'm reading from my real eighth grade diary. So the oh. show is called Mortified. And you have to read a love letter or a diary entry or something really, really cringy. And it has to be a hundred percent real and unedited. And wow, so the that's so is funny. And it's yeah, that'd hysterical. be difficult. It's one of the funniest things I've ever been a part of. I will watch the show and be crying because you can't write comedy that funny. You can't yeah, recreate your breakup letter or the guy. Too specific, <laughs> too weird. The guy too, was like, yeah. the guy in my the, show was like, my girlfriend broke up with me. I'm going to go stand in my driveway and I hope an airplane crashes in my driveway and kills <laughs> me. And like, it was just so bad. Yeah. You know, there's easier ways for, for you to die than an airplane yeah, crashing. You know, I, think you, I think you just watched Donnie Darko and, probably. Yeah. And then you can imagine how many ex-boyfriends. I just did it, of course. And um, I have no boundaries. So, of course, I have to reach out to them on Facebook and be like, Hope you enjoy it. Like, like oh, here's what funny. I wrote about you. Luckily, it was flattering, and um, they they liked their 15 minutes of fame. But uh, you know, I, I, like I said, I have no boundaries. That's. Can you give us a, a taste of what the stuff you were writing was? Well, I was in a very very torrid Hollywood affair during my ninth grade production of Sound of Music. I was playing Sister Bernice, the nun, Sister Bernice, and I was having a backstage affair with Rolf, uh, Liesl's boyfriend, in my nun's habit. So there was some very, there was some very wow. PG-11, you know, uh, makeout sessions in the nun's habit that I recorded uh, <laughs> play by play. So, uh, yeah. Wow. It was, Doesn't it get was, much steamier than that. So, you guys. So now in 2023, last year, my daughter found my diaries. Like, I really have real diaries. And um, I was like, yeah, these are the worst things I've ever done. You should read it. But you can't because <laughs> it's in cursive. So I'm sorry that that's not going to work out for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a dead language. It's, it's modern day it's Latin. It's code. <laughs> I feel like when your generation Bitcoin takes over the world, my generation is going to be able to write a check and get money out of the bank. Like we're the only ones that are going to get. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just have like on Adobe sign, like a very nice looking signature that it makes for you. You can <laughs> click and drag. Yeah. Yeah. This, this but when the apocalypse comes, I have a pen and paper and you guys have nothing. Oh no. <laughs> we're, we're Assuming we're the bank trouble. system is still, is still up and. I will, I will, go, checks. I will be like, take this check and give me money. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, speaking of all these different um, love, love affairs throughout the years <laughs> and things, um, in your bio and in your special, you talk about writing Hallmark movies. I do. Has, yeah. I've written has any, two. Oh, wow. So has anything from your past snuck into the pages of, Oh, uh, oh, you! Oh, I love to tell you this. So my roommate and I are really into like '80s, '90s pop culture. So in one of our scripts, we got all the names of the group New Edition from Bobby Brown, and we named characters after them. (laughs) So we take like '90s hip hop stars that we like, and then we put their names as characters or people. (laughs) Pretty much all of our characters. It's always our kids. Or it'll always be so like the school teacher is Miss Bradshaw because I know a school teacher named Miss Bradshaw. So. Um, Hallmark is very strict on certain things, as you may know, like they're like, you can't have her wearing overalls. And we're like, but she's painting a fence. What do you want her to be wearing? You know, and they're like, (laughs) is that a real example? I hate that overall rule. That's real. And you can't have two dogs. You can have one dog and you can't make fun of the mail because Hallmark is hooked up at the post office because they mail their cards. So we had a joke about a postal guide that had to be cut. And like, oh, I thought, uh, I thought you meant the mail as in like the man. <laughs> no, no, the they, movie. yeah. It's, just, it, it's also budget because if you ever watch a Hallmark movie, the same five extras are in every scene. So you're not going to do a scene <laughs> about a baseball game. Like, so yeah. um, it's a lot of budget notes, but there has to be baked goods in every other seat. Like, legit, there needs to be a cinnamon, like a cinnamon roll somewhere. In a Hallmark movie. And a snowstorm. That's for viewers like me. That's the only thing that keeps me invested. <laughs> yeah, 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 a snowstorm and some guy chopping wood like Joey Lawrence or Mario Lopez or somebody like that. I feel like where did those where does all the these 
specifications come from? Do they have like a people hooked up to like an EKG yeah, to I, monitor I think so. brainwaves? I think so. And they're like, too many dogs, too many dogs. <laughs> okay. We had a scene at a senior citizen's home. And they said to cut it because if we have too many old people, it might be sad. That was it. Oh, oh that's so too much. funny. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that's, Hallmark is brutal, actually. Yeah. I'm going to get sued now. I'm going to get in trouble. I don't want to see, like, when Hallmark takes over the world in 20 I know. years, well, like, they're going to control the amount of old people. Do you know about the war? Like, GAC network, the president of Hallmark left GAC to start GAC network. And then he took, it's kind of like the NFL. He took players. So he took like Candace Cameron Beret, and he took Jesse Metcalf and he took some of their A-list actors over to that network. And so it's kind of, there's competing networks now um, of, of the same exact kind of movies, by the way, the exact same movie with a different cast. So interesting. I did not know that. That's wild. Yeah. They film a lot of Hallmark movies here in Utah. I've oh, by yeah. Like Hall- Hallmark. Yeah. 100%. Uh-huh. And we're always Googling the names of towns. Like, I think we wrote one and it was going to be Utah or Montana. We're always like looking up like adorable ranch towns. Like, do you know what I mean? Because it always has to have a name like <laughs> Arbor Ridge. Or, and then yeah. they'll just feel like we want more cowboy hats and we want more like. You know, whatever they want. And, and yeah. like, yes, you can have whatever you want, Hallmark, because you're paying me good money. So, yes, you can have whatever you want. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, quite a few uh, of them are filmed right on the street that Dry Bar's filmed, actually. They That's awesome. If you hear. Yeah. I was walking by a set one time. They were doing a Christmas thing, and it was filming in, like, July or something. And it would it was actually something I had auditioned for at one point. And so I told some you random – the role? No, I didn't. I wasn't Hallmark material. I, think I was wearing, I was wearing shirt, overalls. You need to be in that shirt and roll your sleeves up and bring like an axe, like you're going to chop the wood. <laughs> Maybe that's how I'll try I really, and get gigs, just yeah. walk past the set. Yeah, just wipe your brow a little bit. Just like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay. I, I, I talked to some crew guy. I was like, I, you know, I actually auditioned for this. And he was like, Yeah. <laughs> Everybody has. <laughs> Everyone has auditioned for Hallmark. What was the role? Can you tell us about it? I think I was some sort of antagonist in um a Christmas thing. I don't know if it if I didn't sign an NDA or anything, but it was But you oh, can't was... be in a Hallmark unless you've had a nineteen ninety sitcom that was <laughs> yeah. on for like nine episodes. So <laughs> yeah. Like... Okay. That makes me feel better. Thank uh, you. Oh yeah. I mean look, come on. Like if you weren't on Wonder Years or you weren't on like, you know, something, you probably won't be in Hallmark. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it sounds like you had a pretty good experience writing for it overall. It was kind of a fun thing, even though there were I, a lot I, of weird I would do it again. To do. I'm I'm still yeah. writing projects a, a quite oh, a bit cool. with my partner Claire. And so when you write a movie for Hallmark, like they might hire us and say, write this movie. But now we're writing, we're writing scripts. And Jesse Metcalf, one of the stars of Hallmark movies, is it like, well, what you do is you get the star attached to your film and then you shop it. So we're shopping it. It might go to Hallmark. It might go to GAC. We'd like it to go to Netflix or Prime. But you're not right. locked in as a writer to only write for Hallmark. Yes, because it seems like Netflix and other streaming stores are making stuff that feels like Hallmark. Oh stuff. yeah, so, so the competition's oh. good. My wife watches that stuff, so I see it sometimes. Yeah, you know, if it's not, not enough well, cinnamon rolls for me in those Netflix versions, <laughs> yeah. Hallmark. They don't yeah. have the recipe figured <laughs> Just out. Just walk in the door with your wife and be like, "Is she a princess? Like, is it?" <laughs> <laughs> Man, yeah, that was so huge. Yeah, that's that was funny. Huge. Carrie, it seems like you had a really interesting path to stand-up comedy, just the way I was reading about your bio and some stuff you've mentioned. Do you mind telling us kind of how you got to stand-up comedy? Yeah. Um, to dry bar? So I was arguing with my teenager that comedians are all deeply insecure and need therapy. And I was like, just because your mom's in therapy doesn't mean that I'm a typical comedian. But um, all <laughs> of us got made fun of in grade school at some point. Like, there was just definitely that. But I... Definitely was a performer kid. I was doing theater and, and, and commercials and things as a kid. I was raised in Detroit, Michigan, go Lions, um, and go Blue, my team, Michigan. Uh, and then I went to, uh, my parents were very permissive and lovely, and they let me go to theater camps, and they let me travel. And they, I loved theater so much. 
and uh, I went to New York. And then I landed in L.A. when I was 22 after college playing 16 year olds. I like I was uh, and in L.A. You just you know, you're an actor. You just take whatever role. I was nurse Kathy on General Hospital for like three years or uh, and then I felt awesome. there was a point in my life where morally the roles I was getting offered off stage weren't on stage were not matching what I wanted to do. Hence the topless scene with Charlie Sheen in the movie that my agent was like, I think this would be a good decision. And I'm think, and that was, you know, that was not, I didn't do it. But um, so stand up comedy became a way for me to write my own material and not compromise like what I was doing. Um, I was in second city for improv and I loved it. But even that got to a point where it was just like, it was getting so dirty. It was getting so raunchy. And I felt like it was time to leave. And so stand-up comedy was this instant pathway of being a control freak and like writing your own scripts in essence. And then it took off so fast. It took off so fast. Uh, I really feel like that was just a supernatural path in my life. And I was touring with uh, Sherry Shepard and Zach Levi from um, Shazam. And like, just, it just, it was my destiny. And I know that sounds cliche, but it really was. But I did have to put the work in, um, you know, and pay my dues. That's what I say to a lot of comics. There's no skipping the paying your dues part. Right. Which is a bummer. That's the hardest part. Which I could skip. You got to go. You got to stack the chairs and you got to make the coffee and you got to go for no money. And these kids today, and they're like, well, I have a hundred million followers on YouTube. And I'm like, I support that. But can you go do a comedy club for 45 minutes without editing and be funny? You know what I mean? Like that's, that's the right. difference between a performer and a standup. You know what I mean? Cause there's a lot of great TikTok performers out there and I love them, but can they come to a dry bar? You know what I mean? That's the difference. True, and even yeah. a lot of the stand-up you see on TikTok now is just like crowd work stuff, which is is its own skill. Yeah. But sometimes I watch that and I wonder if those acts are translating to you know well, just being able to do problem, material for forty five minutes. The problem with the industry is the comedy clubs want to book them because they'll fill the seats. Uh, it doesn't mean you're going to get a great show. So I hope that audiences aren't being conditioned to think like that's what stand-up comedy is. But then on the other hand, Netflix is doing a lot of great specials and. Uh, Chris Rock and Kevin Hart just came out with one. So I think we're still seeing really great comedy and dry bar is putting out really great comedy. So it's not dead. It's just, there's a battle there between, you know, the internet is just changing the form of entertainment. Right. Right. And I mean, dry bar wouldn't exist without the internet, obviously. So there's, there's pros and cons to the, I mean, I'm super grateful. I've gotten jobs because of dry bar. I haven't gotten any dates because of work drive art, so it's kind of sad about that. But um, I definitely, <laughs> you know, made made money because they'll say, "Oh, I saw you on your drive art," or even just fans, which is really fun, you know, that have seen it, and uh, and then they'll be like, "Who else do you like? You know, who else should we be watching?" And so they're loyal, they're loyal followers of the the whole forum of it, which I think is awesome. It is cool. We love our fans, and can you talk a little bit about your actual experience? Yeah. Uh, filming your dry uh, bar special. So I'm proud to say I was one of the first chicks to do dry bar <laughs> back in the day. Affirmative action was strong. Uh, <laughs> I, I've always been asked that question about being a female comedian. Like, is it harder? I don't think so, but I definitely think that I wish there was more of us to choose from. I don't, I don't have the answer of why there aren't a lot of women, but I do feel, um, Dry bar was very welcoming to me. I didn't have anything to prove. I think the beauty of dry bar is you know that they want you. Now, I was going through a really hard time. I remember this. I was going through a really hard time uh, in my career because I've been doing comedy almost 20 years. And you have ebbs and flows and good years and bad years. And you just have a few months where you're not touring and you don't know why. You know what I mean? It's just weird because all of our jobs are like you get a job and then you're done. You have to get another job. It's always a grind. And I did two shows with you guys and they were standing ovations. They were unbelievable. They laughed, they laughed, they laughed. And I came off stage and called my friend Bob Smiley. And I literally almost had tears in my eyes. And I was like, I think I'm still funny. I think I'm still funny. You know, because <laughs> yeah. I, hadn't, I hadn't had a good year like of touring. I hadn't had as much job. We always want more. 
but they were so kind. And, you know, as I like to joke, they were completely sober and still hysterically laughing. And um, it was just such a positive experience for me. And the crowds are really hot crowds like they and they don't fake that. I don't think you're putting laughs in post, you know, um, I hope not. But uh, it was just a really hot crowd, both of them. And it was a really awesome experience. Yeah, they, the crowds are always so fun in uh, Provo. Yeah. You did great. I, I don't think they're adding laughs. We don't. No, we d- we don't add laughs in post. No. Yeah. No. I don't edit them. If I but mean, I, also I can't feel confirm like or deny. Having a <laughs> having a dry bar, being one of the first ones to have one, was sort of like a badge of honor of like, oh, I I'm I did it first, or I I don't know some weird some weird thing of. Uh, you know, and then it was it was fun because you guys were new. And then when our stuff came out, they would get like hundreds of thousands of views and quickly. And uh, you can't deny that that's always fun and entertaining. So was driver at a point where he, did you know that it would kind of be a big thing or when you first booked it, where you're just like, oh, I don't know what this is. But no, I got recommended it. by a couple of comics that had done it first. And all I knew is that it was fun. And that they would treat me really well and that I would get good footage. Like, so that's the comments are like, you'll get really good footage. And that's worth the drive or the plane flight. Um, so that, and uh, I had that Utah snow I taped in January. And it was that beautiful, like, first day snow where it wasn't sludgy and gross. And um, it was just a fun, <laughs> I, I had a great experience. That's awesome. That's awesome. Do you have any plans to maybe come back and do another dry bar special? I, didn't I just mention that 10 minutes ago? Yes. I, I'm always hoping to <laughs> get some estrogen would... back there. I have a friend who's done a few. My friend Bob Smiley has, has done a few. Um, so we're kind of competitive with each other. But, yes, I, I would love that. Awesome. Well, we'd love to love to have you. Make it happen, Taylor. <laughs> yeah, who do you yeah, guys know? I am no CEO power. of Dry Bar. <laughs> okay, but like we're putting it out on the video. You can just like yeah, we're manifesting it in their office. It. I feel honored that I'm one of the first podcasts so that I'm, um, I, I will brag to my friends that I'm in the top. <laughs> yeah, tell, tell Smiley that. So yeah. how do you pick your <laughs> comics for the podcast? What was that? Sorry. How do you pick your comics for the podcast? Um, basically we just kind of go through some of the favorites from, you know, across YouTube specials people have watched a lot of local comedians obviously can be here in person. So they get a, you know, a shot to do it, but we, we pick our favorites. Not oh my God, say it again, it say it again. <laughs> <laughs> but no, and it, you know, you have so many now, so now it's like, I feel like we're like the oh, I'm the original gangster driver, but um, it's still popular. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. OG no, DB. I did get in trouble on the internet for sharing like I shared drive art of me, and then Facebook dinged me for like copy stealing copyrighted material, and I was like, "This is me." I had to go back and prove to them that I was. <laughs> yeah, how dare you, you steal yourself? Well, they're, no, they were. The they internet. were like, they the I got a copyright infringement. Uh, because I was stealing dry bar material and it was dry bar clips, right? And, uh, from dry bar, but I got in trouble, but it was worth it, boys. I would do it again. I think they've changed it recently. The now comics, it shouldn't tag it anymore as long as you tag dry bar in it. I mean, this is behind the scenes stuff. Yeah. yeah, Our listeners love, but, um, yeah, so I think you should be okay and hopefully not. Okay. Get arrested, get arrested or anything. (laughs) Yeah. Or go to Facebook Um, jail. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Oh, speaking of it, I need to ask you this. On your Wikipedia, it says you appeared on Judge Judy, and I just... Oh, my gosh. Hear, okay, somebody <laughs> recently that added that, because you know how anybody can add Wikipedia stuff? Uh-huh. Uh, I did not want that to be public. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so well, I'm sorry I brought it up. <laughs> no, 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 it's fine. Um, so when I was 22 and I lived in L.A. with three girls and one boy, his name is Raymond, by the way. And uh, Raymond moved out of the apartment without paying rent for like eight. We were in like a 12 month lease and he moved out because none of us wanted to date him. And so um, in true L.A. fashion, we were like, we're going to take him to small claims court because, you know, back then, I think as Rhett was like, but it's so funny that we didn't just think like, let's get another roommate. We were like, we'll sue you. And so because uh, we were so poor. And so we put our court in the L.A. Superior Small Claims Court because we were like, you owe us all this money and you skip town. And uh, 
Judge Judy looks for interesting cases. So they're like three girls suing the boy who moved out. <laughs> and then yeah. here's the secret about Judge Judy. She doesn't need to use the law. You actually sign a piece of paper that says she'll try to use the law. But if she decides that she just wants to say something delightful. So um, in my <laughs> case, amazing. Judge Judy and I got in a fight because she said boys and girls shouldn't be living together outside of marriage and that our case had no merit. So basically, <laughs> she dismissed the whole case. So, um, oh, that's wow. amazing. So by the way, that episode is on the internet. It's still like people, I, I, it was discovered when I was in Michigan last summer and this woman was like, I saw you on Judge Judy and I was like, you're drunk. No, you didn't. Um, <laughs> That's so well, fun. People must love it enough to keep adding it to your Wikipedia page. I don't know. Yeah. I think when you're like in LA, you do a lot of reality TV for fun or like actors get hired to do. I did it home shows. I did shopping shows. I did game shows. And plus when you're young, you're like, oh, I get cash. Like I did a reality home show where we got like a big screen TV. And um, I think my whole twenties was trying to get free stuff. Like my whole twenties was just like, <laughs> I will sell my i jumped into a like i was on mtv and it was one of those game shows where you like have to jump into a pile of spaghetti and i was like we're gonna get a costco gift card for 50 bucks okay like i mean it was just oh my god i was on the prices right they should put that on my wikipedia oh really (laughs) i came on down i came on down did you get a did you play a game on prices right I bid $1,400 on a $500 dishwasher. It was not my finest moment. <laughs> I legit have that fear because I don't think I'm very good at prices. No. And I'd be the one where people are going, what is right. he thinking? Well, especially when you're, you're 22, you know, it wasn't. But I, I met Bob Barker and he gave me a headshot of himself with a suit on and his uh, collar was unbuttoned. And he had a gold chain and like a hairy chest like a disco oh, nice. and he signed it. He's like, here, babe. And I was like, this is not what I thought about. But um, <laughs> I'm not a price is right I contestant, but I think that's worth a lot of money. Now, I feel you know, that headshot. I feel that living in LA was always like me seeing behind the curtain in wizard of Oz. I was always saying things um, about celebrities to my friends back home. And then it wasn't legitimized until South Park would do an episode about it. I'm like, Oh, now you believe me, you know? Um, (laughs) But yeah, it was constantly like behind the, behind the the glass door uh, in entertainment, as we all know, but you're giving our audience a lot of homework on old clips of (laughs) Carrie Pomeroy. Well, Carrie, we're about out of time. Is there anything you want to plug before we get out of here? Well, my books, you can find my books on Amazon. Really, uh, I'm just on tour right now all over the United States, and I'm single. And I just need to say that, like, very <laughs> loudly. I'd like to plug <laughs> that, if that's okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. If you're, not the, you're a comedian, the first. if you're not a comedian and you have a job, just send me your tax records and um, send it through <laughs> Drybar, and then we'll talk. <laughs> we'll, we'll filter it for you. That's Carrie, it's like you knew this podcast is all about just revealing secrets and getting dates for the comedian. That's <laughs> what we're trying to do. Is yeah, mine, that's, is that's mine the need. darkest secrets that you've got in your 20s? I mean, I'm hoping that we we got pretty dark. I think so. Yeah, I think, you, I think you're up there. We did. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it was a joy to talk to you, Carrie. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank yeah, you, Thanks guys. for making the time. And thank you to the viewers of uh, Dry Bar Comedy Podcast. Uh, make sure to leave a review if you enjoyed it and and check out upcoming uh, show dates, specials that are